Okay, uh, it's um, 10 minutes past 11, so I think we should start uh, the meeting. Bismillah ar-Rahman rahim Firstly, welcome everyone uh, and welcome Fabian uh, to be here on time. Uh, my name is Muhammad Arif. Uh, my role within this organization has varied over the years. I've been a, a chair um, for a couple of terms. I've been a vice, vice chair for um, uh, uh, many more terms and also uh, the secretary of the organization and um, the um, uh, organization asked me to uh, conduct today's program with Fabian Hamilton and the audience thus why I'm here. So uh, some housekeeping and some ground rules before we launch into the, uh, the, the meeting. Uh, tea and coffee is coming, uh, will be available so help yourself anytime um, so whenever you feel a bit uh, um, dipping in energy, then uh, give yourself a caffeine um, injection. Um, <coughs> nearest toilets for gents is uh, just through those doors and to the right, and for the ladies is through these doors and to the left and through the other door. And uh, um, the nearest fire exits, there's the exit over there and there's the exit just here. So uh, and now that we got that out of the way, some ground rules. Um, this is a very passionate subject, obviously. Um, people feel uh, very strongly about it. Uh, I would say that, and I'm sure uh, we will do it anyway, but it's my duty, since I'm conducting it, to put this on the table that let's keep it cordial, let's keep it calm and uh, respectful. And what I do want to say, uh, I think it is worth saying that Fabian didn't have to be here today. So the fact that he is here uh, it's, it's in itself an acknowledgement uh, of, of uh, how important he sees this and therefore uh, all the more reasons why we should keep it cordial and uh, respectful. And um, finally, the last message on this is that your biggest power, our biggest power, uh, and our strongest voice is our vote. And uh, so rather than shouting, uh, it's best if you uh, want to express your feelings, then you express it to democratically through a vote. So that's where we are, and I'll just walk you through the structure of the meeting, and I'll uh, signpost up front that uh, I'll probably be doing um, a little bit of the, or quite a bit of the talking uh, at the beginning, uh, just to set the scene so that we know where we are, why we're here, etc. And then we'll open it up and I will ask Fabian to come in and then I will ask the audience to come in. So essentially the structure is going to be such that, uh, yeah, they're, they're not Sorry. very good at these bottles. Uh, <laughs> it's only water. Uh, yeah, yeah they, they, if you want to splash yourself, they're absolutely fine for that. Um, so what we'll do is, uh, um, um, in, in terms of introductions, I'll talk a little bit about our organisation and uh, why we've been asked to um, hold this meeting. And then we'll talk about why we're here today. And again, I will just signpost. Uh, most of you are aware of the situation, but I just want to be clear that we have the same understanding. Uh, and then I'll allow um, Fabian to make some uh, initial comments. We'll then move on to your reaction following uh, Fabian's comment. And then we'll do the question and answers, right? Because uh, a number of questions have been submitted. So we'll take that some have been forwarded and will be asked by the people that are in the audience. There are others that have been put forward that uh, um, uh, to us uh, for people that aren't in the audience. And the reason was that we were asked to keep the audience limited. Um, uh, otherwise, uh, we would have quite a, a major gathering. But we wanted those voices to be heard as well. And um, also, we'll uh, wrap up uh, towards the end in terms of what the local community has asked of Fabian and of Labour Party, so I, what are their demands, so we're going to put those on the table. And then what happens after this meeting, so this will not end here, uh, this will continue and what will happen afterwards. So that's basically the structure, time is fluid, we didn't uh, put a hard a stop to it, but uh, um, because uh, again it, it's quite a passionate and uh, um, uh, emotive subject. So um, let me kick off and I said you know the initial bit is going to be me rattling on a little bit so please bear with that. I think it's important to set the scene. So um, who are we? We as an organization, a UK Islamic Mission, we are a Leeds branch of a national organization which has over 60 centers nationwide, massages and centers nationwide. 
Uh, we have two branches in Leeds. Uh, one is this one, which is the Ikra Centre, which serves the Motown community. We also have the Linkfield Centre, which serves the Old Woodley, Adel and Roundy community. And across two centres, we serve over a thousand families. So we're not small, that we have a fair bit of representation. Also, uh, UKIM Leeds was and is one of the founder members of Leeds Council of Mosques. Uh, which basically covers all the mosques uh, across the Leeds area. So that's who we are. And uh, when you ask your questions, uh, I'd say uh, tell us a little bit about yourself as well, because Fabian will probably know a number of you I may know, but there's a number of people in the audience that don't know. So why are we here today? Let's get into the, uh, uh, the meat of the, of the meeting. Uh, and so I'll, I'll start off with by giving you the latest casualty figures and uh, this is taken from Gaza Health Ministry uh, that uh, currently more than 7,000 Palestinians are being killed by the IDF airstrikes. Approximately 3,000 of them uh, are children and over a million people are being displaced from Gaza. And on the other side, um, I've taken this from the Guardian that 1,100 Israelis have been killed in the Hamas attack, attack and over 200 have been taken as hostages. So that is, it's an ongoing war and uh, um, is, is what primary reason why we're here. The other, I think, reason we should, I should share with you, which, which caused a lot of um, blowback, was um, Sir Keir Starmer's interview on LBC with Nick Ferrari on the 11th of October. And I've uh, put down and I've taken exactly what was asked and what he said. So Nick asked Sir Keir that if cutting of power, cutting of water was appropriate as a response to the atrocity. That is what Nick asked Sir Keir Starmer and Sir Keir replied, I think that Israel does have that right. Uh, so that was his response and then he went on to say, it is an ongoing situation, obviously everything should be done within international law. And me being me, I then thought, well, that's quite, <coughs> sounds like an endorsement uh, uh, to continue uh, uh, um, killing. So, uh, Sir Keir being a, an expert in human rights, is it a human rights lawyer? What does the law state? So, I spent some time, uh, and it only took me two minutes, really, to look at what the international law says. So, I just, you will be familiar with this, and the reason I'm sharing this with you, just to set the scene. The international laws are laws of war, known as international humanitarian law. They are designed to protect civilians and non-combatants during armed conflicts, right? So exactly fits here. And then specifically with Israeli occupation of the West Bank and Gaza is regarded as an ongoing armed conflict under international humanitarian law governed by common article 3 of 1949 Geneva Convention supplemented by the additional protocols of 1977 and these laws of war forbid and this is the bit that's really important these laws of war forbid collective punishment of a population so that's what the international law says now the question is uh, and, and i will give uh, uh, fabian an, an opportunity to response after I just put these uh, headlines to you and then I looked at what the UK lawyers have been saying and more than 250 British lawyers including eminent professors uh, have called for the UK government to press for a ceasefire in Gaza saying there are serious breaches of international law that are being committed. This is UK lawyers, over 250 of them have put this forward and they said the UK government must take urgent steps to ensure it complies with its obligations under the Geneva <coughs> Conventions. What are the obligations? Not to encourage. So my reading was that if you're saying Israel does have a right, that is almost uh, giving a green light and encouraging. Not to encourage or aid, which is a plane full of uh, um, bombs and ammunition that you, as Rishi Sunak, went and uh, provided Israel not to encourage, aid or assist violations of international humanitarian law by other states. And then the UK lawyers are finally saying the sheer scale of the loss of life and injury in Gaza, particularly to women and children with widespread damage to civilian objects and infrastructure, 
and this is the last bit, is the really important bit, indicates clear violations of international law, international humanitarian law. So when I looked at that and then I went back to Sir Keir Starmer's response and uh, with the uh, understanding that he is an expert in human rights, mm -hmm. Uh, I was left completely aghast as to how you can square these two together. So, but Sir Keir responded uh, to this and his response was uh, that I was, and this is what he said, I was saying Israel had the right to self-defense. Now I told you what he said, you probably heard what he said, but this is his response. <coughs> Israel had the right to self-defense. I was not saying Israel had the right to cut off water food, fuel, or medicines, right? So uh, that's why we're here. This is the situation that's ongoing. Before we move any further, I think it's only fair, I ask Fabian uh, to, to give his thoughts and comments on the, what I've just put on the table, and this is basically the gist of the feelings that we have and the emotions, and I'll be able, I will open it to the audience as well, so that you can share your interpretations and views on this. Over to you. Okay. Thank you, Arif, for that very clear introduction and for setting the scene. Uh, thank you, uh, friends, for inviting me today to be with you. Um, the first thing I need to say to you is that the number one object of anybody in any civilised society, especially those privileged like me to represent other people by election, is to preserve human life. And that's why, for many years, I was our Shadow Minister for Peace and Disarmament. Unfortunately, I'm no longer on the front bench. I can therefore speak a little more freely. My job is not to defend or attack what the party leader has said, but to tell you what I believe as your representative. And I think what we need to do collectively is persuade and ensure that the British government, that after all has limited power in this, limited power but some, speaks out at the United Nations to call for an immediate cessation of violence and the destruction of human life and, of course, human property that also destroys human life. So that is the number one aim. Now, how do we do that? Well, the first thing, and that's why I've distributed this early day motion. i better explain to you what an early day motion is. It's a motion that any member of parliament on the back benches, who's not in the government or the shadow government, can table in the House of Commons for signature by fellow MPs, who are not ministers, to call for a debate in the, on the wording that is submitted. So it's a, it's a motion for a debate at an early day, an unspecified day. This would have been tabled already, but by the time we'd written it, we had one day of this Parliament left before it's shut, it was shut down on Thursday in preparation for the King's speech on the state only. Sorry to bore you with the bureaucracy, but you need to know that's why it's not already on the table. On, the, on Tuesday, the 7th of November, when the King opens Parliament, <coughs> this motion will be tabled by me, and I will ask for as many MPs as possible to put their names to it. Now, in itself, this means very little. But the more MPs we can have signing it, the more it will show that we value the importance of human life, and most importantly, the protection under humanitarian law and under international law of innocent civilians in Gaza. And it is absolutely vital that the British government does everything in its power to ensure that the Israeli government and the Egyptian government allow the humanitarian supplies to come in through Rafa or anywhere else, even by sea, into Gaza. 20 or 30 lorries a day won't cut it. As the UN itself said, 100 vehicles a day are needed, minimum. And to say that we're not going to allow fuel in because that might get into the hands of Hamas, I believe, is no excuse. Fuel is absolutely necessary for the operation of electricity generation, of hospitals, of homes, of cooking. Everything that makes life possible, you need fuel and energy for. So to say you can have food but no fuel, uh, water but no fuel, is an absolute nonsense. International law, Arif, as you said, should govern everything. The problem I have, to, I have to say, and I have to mention what Hamas has done, because what they're trying to do, and what they've actually done, They've destroyed many Jewish lives in Israel, far fewer than Israel's destroyed in Gaza, but it's not a competition. But more importantly, they're, what they're achieving is exactly what is now happening, not just in Leeds, not just in northeast Leeds, but all over the Western world and the democracies, dividing people. 
And one of the things I want to suggest to you today, and I'll obviously I'm here to listen, so I'll keep my remarks as brief as possible, is that we get a few people from our community here talking to a few people in the Jewish community as well, because we cannot allow ourselves to think of each other as the enemy. The important thing here is that we work together to say we will not be torn apart by the horrors that we're seeing in Gaza and in Israel. We will come together to say that the only way is living in peace with one another and respecting one another. Now, we can't do that in Israel and Gaza ourselves, but we can do it here in our city. And I want to propose to you, you may reject this, but this afternoon I'm going to see the Jewish community, and I'm going to say the same to them. And I'm going to tell them that I've listened to everything you have to say. And I have to be honest with you, when I turn on the television, I have to turn it off almost immediately when I see the news, because I, it makes me cry too, when I see what's happening in Gaza, when I see what's happening in the state of Israel. We have to stop the killing. That is our number one priority. And we have to be clear who it is that has the power to do this. And if you want my honest opinion, not even the UN has the power, it's actually the United States of America. And I think we all know that, don't we? That yeah. they're the only country in the world that can tell the Israeli government this must stop now. So that's what I wanted to share with you. I am with you, I've always been with you, in our mission to protect the sanctity of human life everywhere on this planet and to live in peace with one another. And I hope I've shown in 26 years as our MP, by example, that my love and affection goes out to everybody, whoever they may be, whatever my background may be. And I just hope the killing stops because it can't carry on like this. Thank you, Fabian, um, uh, for your uh, comments and uh, your position. Um, I'll, I'll ask the. I've just noticed, uh, just reading this early day motion, that uh, you're asking for a humanitarian pause. Yes. And not for cessation. Why is that? Well, I'd love to see a complete ceasefire. And if there's a complete ceasefire, I'll be dancing the streets for that. But well, why are we not asking for what we're, what we're talking about? Well, firstly, me saying ceasefire or humanitarian won't make any difference to what actually happens. But I think what's more important is can you negotiate? with a terrorist group. Because I'll tell you this, if Israel said, right, we'll stop all, cease all hostilities right now, mm -hmm. which is what we want, mm -hmm. do you think Hamas will? Because they won't. They'll see it as a green light to go into Israel and continue the killing and the, and the shelling and the missiles. They won't stop because they're not a nation state. You're not dealing, a, a, a ceasefire is an agreement under the laws of war between two sovereign states, nation states not between a state and a terrorist organisation whose only aim is to kill Jews and wipe out the state of Israel. Well, and they do not speak okay, for the Palestinian Okay, people. Fabian, that's, that's your view, that's yeah. your opinion. Uh, um, one can argue that there's only one state that's been wiped off the face of the earth, and that is Palestine. Mm -hmm. And uh, there but, is no uh, resemblance of what was Palestine. But I will ask... But, Arif, we support Palestine, you know that. Uh, uh, no, well, I think saying is one thing, yeah, and actually exactly. acting is actions that speak well, louder than words. Well, let's see what happens when we're... No, let's, let me get yeah. the audience in, and I want to get their uh, reactions. Uh, Sister Corsa over there. Yeah, Corsa, John. Uh, I'm an assistant head teacher and I've been an active Labour <coughs> member. <coughs> Unfortunately, I'm going to be giving up my Labour membership as a result of what is happening in Labour. Absolutely, um, <coughs> I held on uh, with the belief that surely, surely it can't get any worse and afford. So, Debbie, you've just said that there's division, division in Leeds and we need to be talking about um, to each other, etc. Yeah, we do. But the unrest isn't here. The unrest that we're seeing, the bloodshed that we are seeing, is in Palestine. And if we're not asking for a ceasefire, <coughs> surely, surely, these words are empty then. Because we need a ceasefire in order to implement these yeah. words that you've written. So why not clearly state that you are calling for a ceasefire? That's the, the, the thing that we should be asking. Not watering down, because what we want to see, not just as, as Muslims, as, as you know, people that have supported Labour's stance you know, for years, but as, for human rights. 
I know lives are worth more than another, whether it's, it's Israeli life or Palestinian life that, that is taken, that's one life too many. So what we need to see from you, Fabian, is real action by stating clearly ceasefire. That's, that's the bottom line. You've got... Yeah. yeah, can yeah. I just take one from here and then I'll come to your brother. Tariq wanted to say uh, something. Yes, Fabian. Uh, I'm Tariq Mahmoud. I'm just a member of the general public. And uh, today it's 8,000 actually, according to Al Jazeera, yeah. 8,000 and half of them uh, children. So as you mentioned uh, about Hamas, yes, we agree what you are saying, certain things about Hamas, but you, you forget to mention that the general public is that's been killed, the civilians and the children. There's no Hamas. They're not... Uh, you know, as you say, it, that they are standing behind the general public using them as shields. No, there is no proof of that in the United Nations, and everybody has proven that, that that is not the case. And what we want is not today for you to just, uh, I mean, I've read this, that you want to pause in this, and I'm really disappointed that you said pause. Mm. Really, that, that really, you know, I mean, I thought you would come with something bigger than that, something better than that. So we're not looking for just flatterly today, and then tomorrow, you put everything under the files. Because, you know, the general election is just around the corner. Okay, let me get the views. Uh, Sister Ghazala wanted to yeah, say something. Yeah, um, exactly, just to reiterate that. And, and the, the omission of the word ceasefire from here is mm. a real problem. And, and the second thing is, why haven't you signed Richard Bergen's early day motion instead of putting in your own, which would just water down support? Why haven't you signed that one, which clearly says ceasefire, clearly asks for all the things in here? Why did you feel the need? to have another early day motion instead of, of that one. We've got the Secretary General of the UN, we've got Amnesty International, loads of uh, international human rights organisations calling for ceasefire. Why is it that you won't, you can't do that same thing? Well, I would call for a ceasefire if I thought anybody was listening and it meant anything, frankly. Well, why put this in then? Well, because I think this is more subtle and says more than Richard Bergen's Early day motion. His, word, his, his motion contains the word ceasefire, which is what is really needed. And I'm sorry, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but I'm sorry, Tarek, that you think this is just a sop to you. It isn't. I was, I've been thinking about this for some time. Uh, we put it together just before the prorogation. This is, not, this is not a sop to anybody. This is what I feel is the best way forward. And do you think that me calling for a ceasefire or Keir Starmer mm -hmm. calling for a ceasefire will make the slightest bit of difference. I think it was. I, I'm sorry. I, I, it. I wish you were right. Yeah. I'm afraid. Well, this is making it okay. okay, okay. Let's, let's, let's just take one at a time, please. <laughs> and I think what I do want to say that, uh, Fabian, you're, you're getting a gist of yeah, yeah, yeah. the feelings in the room. I know that. I've right? and, uh, emails about uh, it. So. Well, there, there, yeah. there's a lot more yeah. that you haven't got yet. I can assure you mm -hmm. that you're getting the, the feel for the room and uh, I think also from an audience point of view, <coughs> you're getting a very clear picture of where Fabian's coming from as well, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, mm -hmm. let's keep it calm and cordial because at the end of the day, I'll reiterate again, your power is your vote. Uh, so, uh, uh, brother, uh, and then we'll come to you. Brother Bafunotia, uh, sorry. Fabian, as you know that you know me from a long time, when you are even a councillor, mm -hmm. not a member of parliament. I was a news reporter at that time for Delhi Jong. You become a deputy leader, you become a leader. We make you a member of parliament in 1992. 97. 97. Yes. You know the 92 you lose, then 97 we did it you and did it. Why we did it? We, did, we don't have any argument with the Jewish or anything. I've been living in Morton since 1985. Mm -hmm. I have all friendship, everybody, at my work as well. What I'm saying is, this country is saying the children are more important. If a father and mother slap the child, you take him away from them. What about them little children? They slaughter. Little children. I'm not talking about elders. I'm talking about little children. I have been women from a long time. Nobody called them Catholic terrorists. Why? Why? This, this is created by these all agencies, which you call terrorists. They created by them and they right with them. That's how it happened. Particularly, I'm leader of the Labour Party. I'm really annoying about him, the way he spoke. All the, I've been listening to all his statements and all his programme as well. 
he is not giving a little and it's it's look like li, li, literacy so mm. not a labor party opposition leader makes a party working the working government but this leader looks likely he working for the conservative mm. like tony blair and george bush went together where was the smoke fire nothing and they both been proved that they have done nothing that but just kill the people is anybody done any court on them did any trial them they should be both of them should be tried if the civilization is here in my opinion democracy has failed because okay. only 10% ruling on us okay Okay, just, uh, thank you very much, uh, Brother Gafoor. Uh, you did make a, a point that I think is worth picking up, which touches on what, what um, Fabian mentioned when he's talking about who do you talk to, right? They're terrorists, they want to kill Jews, so that's, their, uh, that's their only reason. Um, why did we talk to the IRA? Why, how did that happen? How come we got the Good Friday Agreement and there is peace? If the view was taken, they are terrorists, and they uh, there's no one we can talk to, and their sole purpose is to destroy the English. Then, if that was the attitude taken, we wouldn't have come to the uh, uh, negotiating table. But it seems as though, from what Sir Fabian's saying, and if that's a representation of the Labour Party, that uh, this door is closed for Hamas because they've already been designated that this is a party that we cannot discuss or talk with. So, Brother uh, uh, Mukhtar here, he wants to say something and then we'll come to you, sister. Uh, <coughs> welcome, Fabian. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. Brothers and sisters. Uh, <coughs> as you know, I've been a very long time uh, your friend and friend to other member of parliaments and councillors uh, through the Labour Party and uh, political background. <coughs> uh, <clears throat> I just uh, start from the our current leader of the Labour Party, Keir Starmer. His statement was very disappointful, uh, disappointed to all of our community, Muslim community, not some of the Muslim community. The word he used in his statement, he said, second time, first time he gave the interview to the L as uh, LBC and <clears throat> then he rectified again in second interview he said is not meant well the the uh, reporter asked him question is that your meant to short the uh, water supply electricity and all other aids uh, he said I'm aware of that this uh, statement's been shared widely and Muslim community, some of Muslim community, concern and distress. I correct to him, through you, it's not only some of the Muslim community, communities, it's one Ummah, one community of Muslims, the whole Muslims are affected by his statement and his article, including myself. And, <clears throat> and secondly, he said, he still stayed on his point he is backing Israel, Israel government, not the peoples, the government who is taking this brutal action against the innocents. Uh, uh, nearly 8,000, Brother Tarek just said, i seen on an update as well, 8,000 people of Palestine killed, including half of the children, 3,555 children, they were uh, killed. It's a small children, same, same as you said. You start crying when you watch the TV. I do so, and so many other brothers and sisters as well do the same thing. We have same, I, I shot the TV, I not watched. I only watched yesterday to get an update and to tell you what's happening. You believe this our leader, and I believe this our leader, Chair Kramer, he he does some of the silly and stupid words says each time when he elected newly and he he, 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 he gave the statement about the Kashmir 
if you remember that. Then we sent emails, so many emails went from Kashmiris. And then he became, and apologize about that, he said, he, uh, uh, back from that stream, he said, oh, yes, that no, was not my... Can I ask you to just, uh, yes. there's other people... Yeah, just, 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 just two, two minutes, minutes, please. Thank and, you. <coughs> uh, bro brother knows my message. My message is to the, uh, our Labour Party's member, including MPs, councillors, ordinary members, myself, and we are not going to be uh, in this situation if scare Stramer don't come in front and uh, in public and apologize what he said. You know, he back he back he said it's the right of the Israel to um, cut uh, off water, electricity, yeah, etc. And also the attack. That's the self-defense. He said. I don't understand what's the self-defense the word is used for that, this terminology. And the, the most question to you is the UN is the big organization for the worldwide and for everyone side of the discrimination. And if the UN resolutions is resolutions uh, adopted by uh, Jordan and gone to the UN, UN uh, 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 assembly, assembly yes, and that's passed, uh, approved by 120 members, 14 members of 14 countries against that, and four, e, uh, uh, four uh, members of the uh, UN, which is including America, and some other countries who are very poor country and uh, they, have, uh, they have to go with the, uh, the US. And those uh, not voted, 42 not voted. With this excuse, there are, uh, the, the motion is not um, incomplete, which is not true. If it's not incomplete, how the General Assembly of the United Nations accepted that, uh, the, uh, the, the, the motion? Okay, all right. Okay. Thank you. We'll, we'll uh, come back to Fabian once uh, sister over there wanted to. Hello. Uh, my name is Fina Mahmoud. I'm a senior leader in the NHS and currently writing a book on racial inequality. So this topic, of course, is quite interesting that we're in current times that we are. We've exchanged a few emails on this topic, Fabian, and I think given what you've just said, there's probably three points that I would like to briefly mention. So the first one is Keir Starmer's comments. At best, we can call them clumsy very clumsy for somebody who is of that political influence and power to then go onto a national radio station and make such statements. At worst it's very dangerous because it has unfortunately given the green light to um, both collective punishment, war crimes and the consistent bombardment that we're seeing. So words and language are very important which is why I think also when it comes to the early day motion you said that words can be debated or they're not particularly important I'm just sort of paraphrasing here what you just said. But I think words are very important, which is why I think the call for a ceasefire is needed. Humanitarian pause, for me, and I'm sure for many others, indicates we stop the bombing and the killing for five days, seven days, three days, whatever, a definitive time period. And then after that, we restart it and yeah. carry on yeah. and we go back yeah. to where we've gone. Yeah. Yeah. I don't yeah. think that's appropriate or acceptable. And I think the people that are in that situation at the moment, in Gaza, would agree. So that's the first point. The second point, um, the October the 7th, of course, is an atrocity that occurred. It's horrifying and I can't imagine, as is happening with the people of Gaza as well, how it must feel to live with that fear. However, the UN Secretary General has said, as have so many other organisations, that attack did not occur in a vacuum. It mm. exists among the backdrop of 56 years of occupation of not just Gaza, but the West Bank. And for Gaza, it's an added issue of a blockade. They don't control their own border. They don't control what goes in and out. They don't even control what they're going to have for the next mm -hmm. meal. That's controlled by the occupier. Yeah. That is the root cause of this issue. I think anybody who denies that doesn't understand the complexities of this issue, mm -hmm. therefore should think twice before they speak on it. And that's politicians, members of the public, anybody on that. I hope you would agree with me on that. And thirdly, Hamas governs Gaza. In this country, it is recognised as a prescribed terror group. However, they don't govern the West Bank. So what's the reason for the escalation in violence, killings, shootings, settler violence that we're now seeing in the West Bank? That has 
rapidly escalated in the last few days, where people are having to leave their communities, they're living under constant fear, they're being killed as they try to go about their daily business. There's no, there's no Hamas there, though. Hmm. And that needs to be recognised as well, I think, in any communication statements going forward. Thank you. Fantastic. Nice really, very well put. Ali <laughs> uh, and, and I'll ask, uh, give uh, a Fabi an opportunity to respond to some of the comments that have been made. I, I just asked whether, have you been to Gaza or to the West Bank? I've been to the West Bank earlier okay. this year. Yeah, so I've been to the West Bank uh, maybe a dozen times, and I've been to Gaza as well. I've seen it for myself, not recently, of course. Uh, and it is, it is like a prison. Um, <clears throat> and some of the destruction, previous destruction, is horrifying. In, is that in oh, the West Bank you're referring to? No, Gaza? I'm, I'm referring to Gaza. I'm referring to Gaza. I, when the, one of the last times I was in the West Bank, uh, we were the, in a Bedouin village, and the Bedouin villagers said they couldn't pick their olives from the olive groves that they mm -hmm. owned because mm -hmm. of the settlers. Uh, I also went to Hebron. Uh, I actually, when I was with the Bedouin village, um, I offered to go and pick the olives, and I was told by our UN uh, escort that if I did that, that I'd be shot at by the settlers. Uh, and these aren't, actually, these settlers, you know, they come from Brooklyn. They don't actually come from Israel. They didn't grow up in Israel. They weren't born in Israel. They're people who but believe they're, they're the Bible gives them the right. They are, no, I agree. And that's a real bone of contention. Yeah, and when perfect. we had a meeting in the King David Hotel in Jerusalem after that visit... Plus, uh, you can handle them unless, uh, you know, the IDF is not supporting them. I, I said in front of an audience of mainly Israelis, as a British Jew, you should stop the occupation immediately and withdraw all Israeli troops from the West Bank. And I was cheered by Israelis, yeah. by Israeli yeah. Jews. So we have to recognize there's a very big body, they're a minority, a very big body of people that live inside <coughs> Israel itself, that are Jews, not just the Arabs in Israel, who actually hate what they, is being done in their own name, in their country's name. I was in Hebron with Breaking the Silence. I don't know if anybody's ever heard of them, but they're a, f a group of former military uh, uh, soldiers in the, uh, in the Israeli Defence Forces who absolutely abhor what their own former comrades are doing and their commanders are doing and actually f work against what the IDF is doing to defend the rights of the Arab peoples of Hebron uh, and other parts of the West Bank. So, you know, it is, it's not all of one voice there. You have to understand. And you know, I'm sure, and especially Absolutely. if you've been there, so you've seen it yourself. Like yeah, and Beth Salem is <coughs> and it's now. So I, I was with Yehuda Shaw, who is one of the people who runs um, Breaking the Silence. And he had a stand-up row, which I thought was going to end in shooting or in violence, with a group of settlers. And they were arguing in, in Hebrew. I didn't understand what they were saying. But it was pretty violent, frankly, in, in language. So what I'm saying is there's a huge opposition to what their own government's doing. Uh, no, it's from, with, from within Israel, never mind outside. You've seen the demonstrations against Netanyahu. But coming back to the points that have been made, which I should have obviously written down. Um, look, I, I, I'm, not, I'm not Starmer's spokesperson. You know, I am your MP, and, and I'm here to listen. Now, if you, if you, if you, if you think that me calling for a ceasefire is going to achieve anything, well, I'll call for a ceasefire. But I tell you now, the Labour Party is saying we should have a ceasefire. I, I wish I thought it would make a difference. What I want to see is an end to the violence. Yes. Both but in Israel and in Gaza. Let me finish that. Sorry. It's a war on Gaza. All right, the slaughter. Yeah. 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 The killing. Yeah. 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 The yeah. killing. Relentless killing. Can I just have some order in the meeting? Can I? My brother, can I? Please, please. No, 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 no more two minutes. No, no, no. It's not because. Towards the end. Right. Let him respond. Again, I reiterate. Your vote is your voice. Mm -hmm. right? yes. uh, we're not going to get into a ping pong match here. Mm -hmm. And I think you must also accept, from what we heard, certainly I'm getting the appreciation that we're not going to agree mm -hmm. on everything. Mm -hmm. right? the, the, the sister raised a very, very pertinent point and, uh, um, about West Bank and what's their fault, uh, why the uh, settlers are killing them. And why did we not get Keir Starmer coming on LBC and um, uh, criticising 
the uh, effects, uh, the actions <laughs> of them. But, uh, you know, you're not, I, I'm feeling that we're not going to get to a exact same point, but at the end of this meeting, there are some questions that have been put forward that I want us to go through. They're very important questions, uh, but we will make our own mind up, Sister Corsa, and then I want to move into the, uh, the question and answer session, please. Fabian, you just said that, you know, with your ask, you know, that if you ask for a seat time, that's why we've got you here, to be able to hear what the voices of the Muslims are saying. Yeah. And we're not just speaking for Muslims, we're speaking on human rights here. And to call for a ceasefire, I remember how proactive you were when Tony Blair declared, declared about the Iraq war. I remember how you had said, you know, that no, you know, about um, the anti-Semitism that you felt that Jeremy Corbyn would and you were very proactive and you removed yourself from that. So what we're asking for is the same kind of behaviours <coughs> here, that we need you to be saying to us and reassuring us that, look, I am your MP, I am listening to what you're saying, and I am going to respond, because we're telling you that we're not happy with what Keir Sam has said and what he is doing. Not only that, that people in, in Gaza and the West Bank, they haven't voted for Hamas, and yet they're paying the price for Hamas. Yes, yes, and exactly. that, that is... You know, it's just unacceptable, and that is not being amplified. And we need you, as our MP, to be doing that for us. Can I just have 30 yeah. seconds? Just uh, uh, yeah, you she... and our sister Hannah, yeah. and then we'll move straight into Q&A, uh, if that's Literally okay. 30 seconds, because yeah. I've not studied politics or history, and all I know is, is that if you're not convinced, you're not going to be convincing. You've got to have the ability to stand there and feel it from the bottom of your heart. I'm really concerned about the fact that you feel that you can't make a change. Mm. When you leave here today, we need to be convinced that not only are we asking for a ceasefire, we want a resolution, we want change, we want positive change. We don't want there to be another war in two years' time, in 15 years' time. We want this thing that was put in 1947 and 1948 reversed. We pioneered that. The British pioneered it. It needs to be brought back and it needs to be resolved. We need to clean up our mess. That's all I know. And if, if you can't do it, Fabian, then we need to have somebody that's got the confidence and the ability and the accolade to go forward and move forward with it. Because, you know, if, if you can't do it, then, then we're pretty stuffed, aren't we, really? And for somebody that's uneducated like me, we have to rely on people like you. Can I respond to that, Harry? Yeah, of because course. Of course I can be your voice. What I'm saying is that the British Labour Party is not the British government. It could uh, be. And therefore, it, well, I hope it will be. Yeah. But but we have to win an election first. But you won't win uh, an election unless you're actually hearing the voices. Yeah. Well, that's what I've always tried to do. You know, I've got a, I'm proud of my record over 26 years of reflecting the views of the people that I'm proud to represent. And I've always tried to do that. Um, but in the end, as Arif said, you know, you have a vote. Now, I'm not telling you to vote for anybody else. I want to be re-elected. I'm standing again, even at my advanced stage. Uh, because I believe I've got a, a, a role to play and, and some energy left to fight for world peace and, and an end to violence and an end to arms sales, because that's what I've been concentrating on for most of my political career. And as Kaza said, you know, we, going back 20 years, I defied the whips and marched through the no lobby to vote against the war with Iraq. Uh, and that was because of what was in my heart, but what, what all of you and your parents told me at the time. So um, this one they're asking for mm. a ceasefire. Cease not a not a not a Come on, I'm I'm hearing what that, that's what they yeah, I know I'm yeah. hearing. Yeah, hearing Fabian, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. but you also said that um, you know you, what difference would it make? The difference it would make is if everybody singing the same mm, hymn yeah, sheet exactly. calling for a ceasefire. That's, that's, you know, that, that's, in, uh, that's all uh, they're asking. Uh, should be implemented by the government now. Okay, uh, I've got uh, a One couple of uh, um, uh, things. Uh, I'm on a go with people that haven't had a chance to speak yet, okay. yeah? so I think it's only fair. Okay. Uh, Brother Shizar? Yeah, uh, as you will all know me, I'm one of your local representatives on the council for the mm -hmm. Motown Ward. We, as the Labour Group, this is not Fabian, we're talking about the Lee City Council Labour Group, which you have 61 councillors. In our statement, we have quite categorically called for an immediate ceasefire. We stand by that and we will tell Fabian as well, as your local representative, because this motion is a piece of paper which needs ripping up and putting in the bed. 
backfire and that call has to come from you. You are our MP. We have the same feeling for our Israeli children, uh, the mothers and fathers that have been killed in this, in this terrorist attack. But whatever you want to call it by Hamas, that was not acceptable. But what is going on now is not acceptable. It cannot be acceptable. The United Nations uh, Secretary General uh, Guterres has quite categorically said you have to stand on the right side yes. and this is the right time to stand for it. If we can't see 8,000 people being killed with bombs that we are supplying and the Americans are supplying and there's 3,000 children dying, where is Hamas in 3,000 children? How can they even choose that they are Hamas? We cannot carry on with this double standard policy as Queen Rania yeah. of Jordan has said and I don't care if people in here decide not to vote for me, but what Keir Starmer has said and what has happened from the Labour Party, it does not currently represent the views that of the yes. residents, and it's not just the Muslim residents, yes. there's five, six thousand people marching in Leeds for the last three weeks. Yes. People are saying all lives, like you said, all lives are sacred. And if all lives are sacred, we need to stand on the right side uh, in this world and we need to say wrong is wrong we need to call a spade a spade it's a shame that in this current state we have got someone from the conservative party of baroness varsi saying the right words and as labor people we have no answer to that because she is speaking the truth we have the <coughs> green party calling for a ceasefire now we've got mps nearly 39 labor mps who have signed uh, richard bergen's early day motion for a ceasefire now. We have got all the councillors, you got Councillor Hamilton, you got Councillor Franz Mead, she couldn't attend today. On her Facebook status, it says ceasefire now. You have the Labour Council, where you have got <coughs> three, 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 nine, nine. Represent representatives from your constituency who have all signed this statement asking for an immediate ceasefire now. Well, I'm meeting I, with you tomorrow. So yeah, yeah. I, I, you're, you're meeting mm. with the others. Uh, you're meeting with Councillor Rafiq, I don't know if there's another right, meeting, yeah, yeah. but yeah. what it is is from the Moortown Ward councillors, we are calling for an immediate ceasefire and we, as your that local counts. representatives, yeah. we are not happy with that motion. And the and that's is I think you made your position very, very clear. I just wanted to also add that uh, one of the leading lights in, in this, in wanting an immediate a ceasefire, is the Scottish National Party. Mm. Yes. You know, mm. uh, out of 43 MPs, 39 of them have signed it. And uh, in Wales, uh, Plaid Cymru have three MPs, all three. Uh, and I can't help but feel that perhaps as a Muslim, mm. Scotland and Wales are probably the better places for us to be living in than uh, it is England. But uh, let's move on to Brother Harun. And then we're going to go on to q and A. I I think uh, we will get to where we will get to in this meeting, uh, irrespective of, uh, uh, um, I think you're all getting a feeling for where we are. Uh, yes, Brother Harun. Hi, Fabian. Uh, as alaykum. Uh, alaykum. My name is Sayyid Harun. I'm a civil servant by profession. And I'm the, one of the member of this uh, center, Iraq Center and the Legal Center. Uh, very quick question, a small question, which I just want to get your personal opinion on it. You mentioned earlier that what Gaza, uh, what Hamas have done is a terrorist attack. They, they terrorized the Israeli peoples, they killed or kidnapped innocent people. We and I personally condemn that. But what <coughs> Israel is doing, killing the children's, innocent children, 3,500 children have been killed. Do you, in your opinion, do you think it's a terrorist attack? I think it's a shocking, unconscionable, appalling act to target civilians and especially children. Is it terrorist? Technically, it's not a terrorist act, no, but but it does break it international well, humanitarian law and the, and the rules of war. Well, you, you can decide it's a terrorist act, but at, what I'm telling you in international law, it isn't. Well, is it war crime? No, it may well be a war crime. It may well be. Uh, but that's not for me. That's not for me. That's not for me to decide. But you need to fundamentally killing children. Of course, look, bombing hospitals, schools. But what, what you're saying to me is almost as if I'm trying to defend war crimes, isn't it? The, the killing of, of, of innocents. Hospitals, schools. That's a war crime. And you should never do that. There may well be a war crime. But it is war crimes. Well, then let's then let's take the appropriate action. But 
this is not going to help mm. stop the war, is it? We've got to stop the war. We have to raise our voice, you said. Yeah, exactly. You, you said you that nobody's going to listen. Yeah. Yeah. If you do not raise your voice, no, what, what, no, no, what, what, what I'm saying is that the British Labour Party is not in power in this country and therefore doesn't have the yeah, authority. Yeah, but they have a They may be, but the, okay. the current British yeah. government is what we need. They're the people we need to persuade to go before, into the UN. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. I'm not. You can raise your voice. Why would I hide? Brother uh, Tariq, why would I hide? Fabian, Sorry. Uh, Brother Tariq and, and the rest of the members, uh, I will say, and I'll, I'll keep repeating this, that uh, I, I think we are not going to agree on certain things here. Mm. It's pretty obvious, right? And you can keep arguing till the cows come home and you keep uh, throwing different things. Uh, you're not going to get to that uh, central point. Um, so what I want to do is, is pick a few questions. I think a number of the questions have already been uh, asked indirectly and you've already got a response. And there are some that I think that haven't been asked, but we already know the answer to that from, from the conversation that we've had. So uh, I'm going to uh, uh, select some questions that I think haven't been asked yet. Uh, one of those uh, is, where's Brother Adhanan? Uh, um, your question on... Keir Starmer's uh, statement on LBC. Is that, you... uh, I, have, I, can, I can read it out then. So the question that you submitted was uh, for you uh, personally, uh, Fabian, and I think you've, you've made your position, but again I'll ask, uh, will you publicly denounce the recent statement by Sir Keir Starmer in which he expressed support for Israel's decision to restrict access to medicine, water, and electricity to people of Gaza. And if that's what he said, I fundamentally disagree with it. I fundamentally disagree. Of course I do. Well, what do you mean, if, if you what, what, well, I don't, what I have Well, I haven't read what he said. Well, I can no, read it not? to you. Uh, this is exactly what he said, and it was... It was on LBC, and they've repeated yeah. it. Yeah, so let me, let me read it to you, for, verbatim. Uh, let me read it to you. It's on YouTube. Word for word, what he said. It's on YouTube. Yeah, okay. Well, this okay, well to, to save you the trouble, Arif, yeah. I absolutely disagree with it and renounce what he said and I will have no part of it. Would you, the, the question is, would you publicly distance yourself well, and denounce it? Well, I've, I've said it publicly. This is public, isn't it? I've said it. Yeah. You're recording this meeting. Yeah, right. I've said it in yeah, public. Okay. All right. yeah. I'm okay. very, very unhappy and I denounce what's been said. No, nobody should be saying that. Okay. All it's right. not just Keir Starmer. Nobody should be saying good. that. Good, good. So that's, uh, that's very clear. Uh, there's listening. a question from Sister Henna. Uh, I'll come to you, Sister Corsa. Uh, um, is okay, around the media. Um, I think before I ask that question, I'm just a little bit concerned, Fabian, that if you are our MP, you're our vice, our representative, mm. and that's part of the Labour Party. Yeah. And within the Labour Party, there are meetings happening about this very issue. Up and down the country, I know that the deputy lead, Sue Gray, is having weekly meetings about this. So as our MP, are you involved in these meetings or not? I've not been invited to any of them. That's a concern and I'm more than happy to raise that. Well, you're, you're welcome to raise it. I was a Shadow Foreign Office Minister for nearly eight years. I'm no longer. I was sacked from the front bench. Yes, you know. I, remember that I spent nearly four years as the Shadow Minister for the Middle East yeah. and North Africa. So I, I, feel I know like the region Labour well. itself is a huge divide. But, can, so but you know, can I just say one thing? that <clears throat> I represent all of you. That's great. And I love you all. And I represent uh, 8,500 Jewish people as well, many of whom have got family in Israel. And I represent everybody else from all the other communities too. So sometimes these things are totally irreconcilable. And if you feel I'm being hesitant, I'm thinking in the back of my mind also of the other people I represent too. I want to try and represent everybody. That may not be possible, of course, but I'm going to try. Okay, uh, Sister Corsair and then uh, uh, Sister Gazala. Um. Okay. Um, Fabian, I just wanted to ask you, can you please explain your definition of justice and what the definition of genocide is? Well, I, I, I can't explain it, no. You don't think that what, you know, that when we look back and look at what Hitler did about that genocide, yeah. Sabinita, Rwanda, um, and that's what's happening in Palestine at the moment, that we as members are just absolutely appalled that the actions that are being carried out by Israel at the moment are tantamount to genocide genocide of the Palestinians and denial of their human rights um, and the, the whole thing that 
there's been happening. We are not hearing the word genocide being associated with collateral damage. No, it isn't. Children and women that are being murdered, that it genocide, you know, whole communities, families wiped out, and we're not hearing people, you know, thought, understanding about genocide. Why is it that you can't explain that? Well, I, I'm sorry, I can't, I, I can't explain that because it's what do you want me to say? I want you to understand. The I, I do understand. Yeah, I'm a Jew. I understand what that means. Yeah, exactly. My, my family were wiped yeah. out during the Second World War. Exactly. They were sent to the concentration camps. I know what genocide's oh, about. So please don't try and explain yeah. to me no, no, what no. you think genocide we know, is. We know what genocide has happened there, but what we're saying is that the genocide that's happening is the same that was happening there. It's happening in Palestine. And why is it that we can recognise one form of genocide and yet not another? And this well, is happening I, now, here. You know, I do the horrors that are going on, I have denounced, I have told you how upset, how angry it makes me, how I wanted to stop. Together we need to make sure the killing stops. It is not the same as industrial genocide as the Holocaust and the slaughter of the Jews during the Second World War, which was industrialised, taken to concentration camps and systematically murdered. <laughs> it, is, it is shocking. It is no less shocking, but it is not the same. Okay. In two we'll weeks, 7,000 yeah. people died, and it's not industrialized. Yeah. No, in two weeks, 7,000 well, people in children. mother and children. Just, yeah. It is more than industrialized how, killing. How, much, how many more times do you want me to say how angry, upset, distressed, yeah. how emotional I feel about it too? I, I feel exactly that, but I'm, I just read more history of the, of the Holocaust because well, then you'll see it's uh, no, not, I'm, I'm it doesn't gonna, matter. I'm, a, no, sorry, I'm going to, uh, uh, I've just been handed because we need to, uh, uh, I think yeah, you, you can make, yeah, Fabian's got another meeting, we can keep making the statements, uh, you will get the same response, right? And uh, uh, again, at the end of the day, uh, you make a decision because there, there's a demand that's been made of us. Uh, as representative of the local community that, that we were told to put forward to Fabian Hamilton as to what the community... Mm -hmm. The reason we've only got a handful of people here is because that's what was asked by Fabian's mm -hmm. team, mm -hmm. that we don't want a, a big group because had we actually uh, made a public announcement, uh, we would have needed a far bigger venue than this. But we respected that, we wanted to keep it, uh, but we will be taking the minutes of this meeting, the recording of this meeting, and one of the things that I uh, want to share with Fabian is what the local community has demanded that we put. Sister Corsa, I it's have to... One thing I you have, I've given you more than, more than <laughs> enough know, time. But next to just say, Fabian, we haven't called you here to have a go at you just because we feel like it. You are our I voice yeah. and you represent us. And if we are not coming to you and we're not being heard, then we need to go away and think like, actually, who's going to listen and who's going to be proactive? Well, because every one of us can make a difference. We, we can't, you know, change the war. We can't change what's happening straight away. But collectively, we can. Well, sister, I'm here because I have be prepared to listen and I have heard what you've said and tomorrow I go to the Islamic Centre and I hear more representatives of the community there. Okay. All right. Uh, did you want to say something and keep it 30 seconds because whether yeah. you did a it's long a, speech and then... It's a, <coughs> which is not answered by it, uh, Fabian. Maybe it's he's not going to answer. That's what I'm saying. There are certain questions no, just, you keep just asking. Just for everybody, it's mm. our collective issue is the ceasefire. Is the United Nations resolutions approved and uh, uh, I don't know it's, it's still going on it's, it's, it's more bombardment after that it's still going on it's, it's getting in the hospital as well when is going to be ceasefire even it's approval of uh, the United Nations uh, with the majority I think Fabian's already answered that question right this is why I'm saying let's yeah. not keep going round in circle yeah. because he believes asking for an immediate ceasefire Yes. It's uh, uh, exercise in futility because yeah. nobody's going to listen. And they uh, labor, they, his position is one to ask for a humanitarian pause. That is very, very clear, uh, yeah. Sister Ghazal. Yeah. No, because you did say if you want, if you want me yeah, to ask no. for a ceasefire, I'll ask for a ceasefire. And we are asking uh, you, we're asking to, you call to call for change. a ceasefire. Yeah, That's what we're asking change. you to do. Yeah. No, and okay. the other thing I would just like you to And I need to reflect on what yeah. you've said. I would okay. just like you to take away from this meeting that when you talk about Jews and Muslims, it's not Jews. It's not Jews we're talking about. It's Zionists. People who are occupying the West Bank and Gaza and think that it's a colonial project and think that they have the right to take over those 
uh, over those places and take over the land of Palestine and make it as the Likud party wants to make it simply for Jewish people. They've clearly said that. They've come out in, in, in Minister of Defense has said it. There's no there's actually no uh, question that is that is exactly what they want. So when you talk about Hamas wanting to kill Jewish people, their charter actually doesn't say that. They say that they want to, to oppose the Zionists. They don't talk about Jews. Mm. I think it's actually anti-Semitic to talk about Jews when we talk about Israel. We should be talking about Zionists. Well, I'm glad you said that, Ghazala, but I just refer you to what happened in Dagestan yesterday. Well, the, yeah. The, you know, the, yeah, and, and, and we could refer you to many, many incidents. Yeah, of course you could. In Gaza yeah. but, and in the West Bank that are even worse than Ultimately, that. what we need to do is make our voice so loud that the UN and the Americans, who really can stop this happening, stop it happening. Okay. And I'm the Likud do not speak for the majority of Israelis. Okay. Okay. Uh, um, I'm, I'm going to put forward what, what the local community have asked us. You've already touched on that, Sister Ghazala. Mm -hmm. um, I do want to put uh, my view and feelings forward as well. Um, and, and those of you that don't know me, I'm a British-born Muslim. I was born in this country. I was, I was born in this great city. Um, educated and I'm a professional. I've been a law-abiding citizen all my life mm -hmm. and I've always tried to do what I believe is right and stand up for what is just. And I have to say to you Fabian that in all honesty I cannot see myself voting for a Labour Party under Keir Starmer because what I have seen both in Kashmir and in Palestine is that Keir Starmer would rather stand with the oppressors mm -hmm. than those that are being oppressed. Exactly. You will, you can shake your head and you can disagree, and that's your right. It is my right I to tell you. Right. It is my right to tell you where I stand, and I can tell you that if things don't change, if this is the kind of situation he's going to stick with, then I can assure you, uh, right, honourable uh, uh, friend, that uh, I will be campaigning. Uh, against uh, Keir's um, uh, Labour Party and I'd like to just finish with what our local community has asked us to have requested of you. Right. Uh, one thing you've already answered which is, uh, so the first thing they asked for is for uh, you to sign the early day motion calling for not a pause but an immediate ceasefire. You've answered that. Uh, they've also asked for you to publicly distance yourself from Keir Starmer's comments. You've done that. The third element is, is really the message that this community wants you to convey to the Labour leadership, in particular Sir Keir Starmer, and that is uh, we would want him to retract his statement for that he made on LBC on the 11th of October. We want him to call for an immediate ceasefire and we want uh, call, uh, the application of international law in what is happening in Gaza and in Israel to be looked at it independently and those that are violating the international humanitarian law to be feeling the full force of the law. This is what the people of our community have asked to put to you and I just want to say what happens next? We will now take this message and this meeting to our bigger congregation. We're going to do this this Friday. So as I said, we represent over a thousand families across both our centers. There's a lot of emotion and there's a lot of pressure on us. So we will take the summation uh, of, uh, we brought their thoughts, we brought their uh, questions to the table. We had this discussion and we will share their response. And then of course, it's up to them to decide whether labor is the party for them moving forward under Keir Starmer or not. And just as each and every one of us has this choice moving forward, I think the days of us blindly voting <coughs> Labour uh, like lemmings and uh, being under the influence of our so-called local community leaders and uncles and relatives, I think those are long, long gone. And um, uh, so, uh, like I said, you know, the best way to express yourself is democratically through your democratic right to vote. So that's where we stand. And if I can come in on the third question, yeah? I always support the application of international law in any part of the world, well, whether, no, that's, whether that is China or Yemen, whether that's anywhere else in the world. Yeah. It should be equally yeah. applied consistently. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, I think we will wrap the meeting up. Fabian needs to go. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Please, Thomas, should be resigned, please. Oh, oh come on. That's not going to happen. I'll tell you. So, yeah. 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 What yeah. do you want him to do? Yeah. Uh, so, that's not going to happen. So, let's not ask questions that we know are uh, uh, not going to happen. 
Uh, just just make uh, a the quick last brief uh, comments seconds. and yeah. then we'll wrap it yeah. up. Please. I would like to thank Fabian. I know this has been a really tough meeting for him yeah. and I could understand the emotions running high. I am also emotional, but I'm also emotional for my Jewish uh, residents that we have got. They should not have to be putting up with all the missiles that are coming across, but the United Nations, the British government, or the British people, uh, as has been said earlier by one of the sisters, the Balfour Agreement, we have left messes in Palestine. We have left issues in Kashmir. We should, why are we always having to follow America? Yeah. We need to have a government and the MPs and the elected <coughs> members and the leaders of our parties that can actually speak up for England and Britain and the United Kingdom, not not say and do what America asks us to do. Just, uh, like if we blindly f uh, kind of follow on and go into wars like Iraq and everything else, it's just not good. But and I they think they always will. They always yeah. Do. And 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 they the thing is, this is as your will. local representatives, yeah. I will repeat uh, again: uh, we uh, have, uh, uh, and we were the uh, first uh, council to oh, call the, 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 to yeah, call. Yeah, uh, yeah, we will let Fabian go in about Sorry. thirty seconds. We were the first council to actually call <coughs> for an immediate ceasefire. And I would like Fabian, as one of his local representatives and councillors who represents Labour, I would like Fabian to hopefully go back and reconsider this and change this and change this to. I know the uh, the earlier uh, early motion is close. I would like him to change this not to a humanitarian pause. We would like Fabian to change this to a call for an immediate ceasefire now. This is both for the Jewish people and for the Muslim residents of Palestine. It has to be fair and equitable for everyone, not just for one. So I, I, if, if Fabian can give his final comment on changing the wording from a humanitarian pause. To uh, immediately he's already given no, that uh, if he's willing to do that, yeah. uh, uh, okay. I, I think it's before you go to the congregation, I, I think we should get Fabian. Right, well, well, let me reflect on it. And reflect. Yeah. If you okay. can get back to Arif, yeah. 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 great stuff. Excellent. Okay, uh, and on that note, I think we will wrap up. Uh, we've got Zor time coming as well, and uh, I'm sure we could have questions and comments uh, tipped in this evening. But uh, you've got a, a flavour uh, for where we are. Uh, tea and coffee. Uh, coffee is available now as well after popular demand. Uh, just when you to so grab a cup on your way out, I suppose. In case you want to jump up. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So again, uh, yeah, thanks, we should have really had a meeting with the Jewish community so that Fabian knows where we're on the same side. Uh, well, we just had a chat. About yeah. No, we just we just had a chat. We just, about we just had that conversation. So, uh, and we went. Uh, yeah, so I'm going to the Jewish community now. No, and then we um, will we will have that dialogue with them as well. And and I think right. Can I use? Can I give them your contact? You, you can. Uh, they can put me on the uh, dartboard. They will. Uh, they can um, do. Uh, that's fine. So I think we'll wrap well, it up. I, I here. can be the go-between if you want. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think that might be. Okay, right, okay. Windows, actually. Okay, yeah. 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 okay. So thank you all for coming and for your time, and uh, thank you again, Fabian, for coming. And again, I want to reiterate, you he didn't have to come. So thank, thank you, Fabian. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry friends, we got I've got a I'm not being rude but I've got to get off to the meeting.